Okay, new rule. If you're gonna have your cell phone go off in mass, it's gotta be something better than Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> I mean, you might as well play Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> so, today is often called uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. We celebrate Jesus as the shepherd. But oftentimes, when we talk about Jesus as a shepherd, we sort of fail to recognize ourselves as the sheep. Now, I think this is uh, kind of a, a bit of Jesus' good humor here in calling us sheep, because on, in a farm, probably chickens are the only dumber animal than the sheep. I've seen videos, you probably all have two, of uh, a sheep sort of caught in a ravine. The shepherd goes down and tugs on the sheep, tugs on the sheep, pulls the sheep out. Sheep goes bounding around the field and straight back into the ravine, right? And it's sort of an analog for my own spiritual life, my own moral life. We, we, uh, we get stuck and trapped in something. We cry out to the Lord. We bleat. He comes and saves us. And we're all so grateful that we fall right back into the ravine. And that's okay. That's part of being a sheep. He, he doesn't expect us to do more than we can do. This kind of goes to what I've said before, that Jesus does not expect us to perfect ourselves. Jesus expects us to let him perfect us. No single person, no one, except for the Blessed Virgin Mary, dies perfect. This is the essential, this is the necessity of the church's understanding of the doctrine of purgatory. That there is yet perfection needing to be done as a faithful disciple, a faithful shep, uh, sheep of Jesus' flock passing through the veil of life, passing into the dark valley of death, still has work to be done to them. We're done being able to do any work for ourselves, so we kind of we end the way that we are, right? which means we're either facing one direction or the other. We'll talk more about that in just a second. But there's still more journey to be done. There's still more following of the shepherd. If you consider the sheep gate to be death, well, once you pass into the gate, you still have to go a little ways. The shepherd's going to take you right over to where the best grass is, going to take you right over to where the cool water is, right? And, And being led by Jesus, even in the moments after death, is part of our journey as as sheep. Now, here's the thing. Jesus says, uh, When he has driven out all his own, that's all of his, all of his sheep, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. Now, in, in Israel, and I'm going to have the blessing to go back to Israel for the third time now in two weeks with uh, St. Monica's Parish, um, I've, 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 I've actually seen this. The shepherds bring all of their sheep, they all go to one well, Right? Let's say you've got five folds, five, five herds, all fighting at this well for, for water. The shepherds are getting pails of water, and they're dumping it into the troughs, and the sheep are just mixed up. They all look the same. There's no distinction between these sheep and these sheep, except for one little part in their brain that knows a particular shepherd's voice. That's the only distinction between these sheep. So then when the shepherd is ready to leave, he just starts making a ruckus, making some space. All the sheep kind of run away, especially the ones that don't know him. And then he strides off and he starts singing, actually. Here, Jesus says the voice. It kind of gives you the idea that he's just going to be talking to the sheep. But the shepherds, at least in Israel, in Palestine, the shepherds sing. As they walk, they just sing. And the, the sheep know his voice. They know his song. And so as he's walking away from the well, the sheep are like, oh, where's my shepherd? Oh, there he is over there. And so they all, they separate themselves out on their own. It's like the only smart thing that sheep do. They'll, they'll separate themselves out from their own because they know the voice of the shepherd and he's going that way. And so he does, the, the sheep do that, they follow. Now here's the thing. Every sheep knows some shepherd's voice. And there are a lot of shepherds at that well. But there is only one shepherd who's going to lead those sheep to where those sheep really want to go. This is why Jesus, or excuse me, this is what Peter is trying to emphasize. Got the wrong book, hang on. This is what Peter is trying to emphasize when he says... 
somewhere. Oh, no, sorry. What I'm thinking of is what, what Jesus says. Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs elsewhere is a thief and a robber. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. So what he's saying is that all the other shepherds at this well are basically all the other powers in existence, all the powers of the world, right? Um, all of the things that, that scream for our attention now. And what would happen is the well is the world. All the sheep of every shepherd are all mixed up. You and I are sheep of the good shepherd. But there are those in the world who belong to other, other flocks because they have learned not Jesus' voice, but the voice of the other shepherds. So that when Jesus calls, those sheep actually don't even recognize him. They don't know his voice. In fact, he's the stranger. They're going to run away from him. And they're going to run to what they know. So if we live our lives, we, look, here's the thing. It doesn't matter if, if you're a Christian or not. We are all sheep belonging to some shepherd, right? We either learn the varied and numerous voices of the shepherds of the devil, the, the, the one, the potent, the, the ruler of this earth, and for the time are convinced that these are the good shepherds until, its end and, until the end and we're led to slaughter, or we learn the voice of the good shepherd, but we're going to know somebody's voice. And when we die and we enter into the dark valley, and along with the cacophony of all of the other voices that we've heard in the world, and we hear the song of the shepherd coming over the valley, or over the mountains, down into the valley, to tell us where he is and where we should go to find him, we won't recognize it. We will be utterly lost and stuck in that valley. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is we hear the voice of the good shepherd, and because we know it's not our shepherd's voice, we're going to go in the other direction. We learn that here and now, at the well, in the world. Whose voice do we listen to? Whose voice do we know? Do we spend more time listening to the voice of the world that tells us we need to be engaged in six different sports every season? Do we listen to the voice of the world that says, I need to, I need to struggle and to strive and to, 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 to be so super, super stressed out in school so that I can get into a college only so that I can be buried in debt up to my eyeballs and get a job at Verizon Wireless? Which, if anybody works at Verizon, there's no problem, right? But it's certainly not, retail is certainly not a, a job that a person needs to have an $80,000 education for, right? To listen to the voice of the world that says, um, oh my gosh, my life is ruined because the, my, my uh, retirement fund has been cut by 30%. I don't know, what's, uh, who, who's, ne never mind, that would be an embarrassing question. <laughs> Somebody's volunteering the information. <laughs> that, that I'm going to lose my peace in the world because the person that I want to be elected, it wasn't elected to listen to the powers of the Republican Party or the powers of the Democrat Party and base my morality, base my expectations, base my definition of what is good and right in the world on some other human definition. These are all voices of different shepherds that aren't Jesus. Right? Republicans don't go to heaven. Democrats don't go to heaven. Christians go to heaven. And if you try to, try to take Christianity and push it into one of the boxes of our American bi bipartisan uh, uh, political system, you're not going to go to heaven. Because the voice of the shepherd is not the voice of Joe Biden. It's not the voice of Donald Trump. It's not the voice of... Oprah Winfrey on The View. It's not the voice of Michael Knowles on Daily Wire. The voice of the Good Shepherd is Jesus Christ. And he alone is the one 
that if we listen to him, we will be led to, through the sheep gate to the good pastures and the cool, clear waters. And y'all, that is the only way that that works. And this is, this is where Peter really comes in when he starts preaching after Pentecost. We want to be members of the, sh- of the flock of Jesus because that's the only way to heaven. The only one who can go to heaven, Jesus says, is the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. The only way for us to get to heaven is be a member of his flock. In other word, to be a member of his body, the church. Only his body goes to heaven, y'all. And everybody listen to me. Everybody pay attention. Only Jesus' body goes to heaven. He's the only one that fits into heaven. If we want to be there with him, we must be in him. In his body, which alone can go to heaven. Confucius doesn't fit into heaven. Muhammad doesn't fit into heaven. Buddha certainly doesn't fit into heaven. Super fat. Only Jesus, only Jesus, who is the Son of the Father, the only Son of the Father, who is the second person of the Trinity, who is a member of the, 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 subst- the substance of God, only he goes to heaven. This is why Jesus says over and over, why he repeats it so many times, you must be a member of my flock, because everybody else is a robber. I'm the only one who can pass through the gate because I am the gate. I am the shepherd. Just like Jesus is the priest, Jesus is the victim, Jesus is the altar, and Jesus is the temple in which the sacrifice is made by the priest on the altar. He is all in all, the Alpha, the Omega. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Regardless of what politics, regardless of what society, regardless of what contemporary morality says, He and he alone can lead us to heaven. And so we have to ask the question, what must I do to be a member of that flock? Now, all of us here, most of us here, there might be some that that do not belong to Jesus' flock right now. We can fix that. And I'm going to tell you how. Most of us here have been made a member of God's flock by the gift of our parents bringing us to the font of baptism as infants. We've been made a member of Jesus' flock before we even asked for it because it is something that our parents knew was necessary for us and something that the church knows is necessary for us. And so it gives it to us as early as possible. Listen to what Peter says. When, the people are, when, when Peter's like, hey, y'all, just to let you know, I'm not letting you off the hook, you killed God, by the way. And you all said, may his blood be upon us and upon our children. You killed Jesus, whom God made Lord and Christ. And they're like, oh, crap. Well, what do we do? Is there a way out for us? And Peter says to them, repent and be baptized. This is how we are made members of Jesus' flock. Repentance and baptism. It is the only, only the ever, it is only, it is, hold on. It is only ever, it is ever only. It's the answer <laughs> that is only, it is only, the, this is, I'm having like a meltdown <laughs> in my brain. I'm getting old, Yes. This is the only answer ever given. There we go. (laughs) The only answer ever given for how am I to be saved? How am I to be made a member of the flock of Jesus, the good shepherd? How am I to be made a member of the body of Jesus who alone can go to heaven? Brothers, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. The church is one holy Catholic and apostolic. We call it Catholic because this is the thing necessary for every human being. The word Catholic here, unlike the Protestant interpretation of the word Catholic here, which is why they can say the Apostolic Creed and still, you know, say it, is 
that they understand Catholic to mean just everybody goes to heaven. All dogs go to heaven. Right? That's the idea. We just fall into heaven. Jesus came so that everybody goes to heaven. It's universal. But that's not true. There's a specific way to get to heaven. But that every single person, it's available to every single person. Because God made every single person and he wants every single person to be made a member of the flock of his son because he sent his son so that that's the way we can be saved. And so we have to repent and be baptized. So if you're not baptized, it doesn't matter how much you love the idea of Jesus. You're not a Christian. I want you to be a Christian. Come talk to me after Mass, and we will talk about getting you baptized. Baptism is the gateway into the body of Christ. It's the gateway to the heaven. It is the thing that makes us Christians, by which we are known to be Christians, because it's in baptism that we are regenerated, forgiven of our sins, washed clean, and regenerated into the person of Christ that we might be a made a member of his body. That's what baptism does, and it's absolutely necessary for salvation. Okay? So if you're not baptized, there's nothing preventing you from being baptized. Just you've got to come talk to me, okay? and we can make it happen. But the other thing for those of us who are baptized, we, we screw up all the time. We start listening to other shepherds' voices. The things that, the things that, that, that make it easy to get through life without, without bumping into people, right? One of the voices of, of, a, of a modern day shepherd is the voice of, of, of pluralism. You know, there's the voice of relativism. There's the, the, the voice of live and let live. Uh, there's, the, there's, the, uh, there's the voice of you do you. But what person who loves another lets them run into a burning building? What person who loves another lets them run off a cliff? What person who loves another lets them, lets them hold a cannonball and jump into the ocean? That's not live and let live. That's live and, let's live wrongly and die right? We oftentimes get confused by the voices of other shepherds, and we need to take time each and every day to reset our expectation for ourselves. I am a member of the flock of Jesus. His voice, the voice of the good shepherd, is the only one I listen to. We do that by prayer. When we sit in prayer, in silent prayer, and I know some of you guys, you know, have a tough time finding silence, right? But to, but to let the Lord provide that for you. Remember, we don't pray. We make ourselves, we dispose ourselves to prayer and then God makes prayer in us, okay? So you make yourself disposed to the Lord and he will sing you a song. And you will listen to that song and you will learn that song. And when you die and you find yourself in the scary darkness of the valley of the shadow of death, you'll hear the voice of the shepherd singing to you a beautiful song and you will hear it and you will know, there's my shepherd. I have no reason to fear because there he is and I'm gonna to walk to him and he's gonna bring me through that gate to the green grasses and the cool water and I'll have made it through life successfully because I will have been known to be a member of the flock of the good shepherd.